are post shower. Just came home from a movie. Sa Petite Maman. Um, it's filmed by Celine Sciamma. A precious film. Very precious. She's the same director who did Portrait of a Lady on Fire. If you haven't seen it, it's the best lesbian drama ever. Yeah. Except Carol, maybe. Yeah, it's a very soft and open film. It's about, um, no, no, not gonna spoil it. The best thing you can do with the Celine Sciamma film is to just go into it blindly. I did that with Portrait of a Lady on Fire. I was, my jaw dropped. Same with this film, not to the same extent, but it's a, it's a lot, it's a delicate, it's a more delicate film. Before that, I, oh, I did some reading in the park. Uh, we are reading The Idiot. Alif Batuman. Batuman? Batman? Batuman. Not much is happening. I mean, I'm 10% into the book. We're following this girl in university who's sort of bumping in between classes that she doesn't really enjoy, it seems. Um, she's a literature major. She's taking all of these like uh, Russian literature classes. And the way she talks to people is really interesting because it reminds me of like social anxiety that one has when they meet people, where they meet new people in their like first year of university. And she captured that really well. And um, yeah, I am enjoying it so far. She does these things where she creates traps for this character, whether they be social traps or mental traps, and even traps within the writing, the way she phrases some of the stuff. You feel like you're always cornered with the main character. Not quite sure if she is the idiot, which I'm guessing the title refers to, but it had me thinking, I wish I went into university not pretending I knew everything. Yeah, I think about that a lot. I think about like why I tried so hard to pretend that I knew everything when I don't. Ignorance is bliss, but also learning every single day is super cool too. Aside from that, I'm also reading, I'm also reading Glitch, um, Glitch Feminism by Legacy Russell. And quite, quite interesting. I'm enjoying this. It's a little airy, but I've been thinking about like, what does the body mean? And how does the body interact with daily objects or daily people? How do we apply ourselves to things in life? Do I sound like an idiot? <laughs> anyway, yeah, the hurdles. The hurdles that the body encounters, the steps it has to take in order to reach that uh, meeting between body and object or body and body. Been thinking about that a lot. Yeah, so um, though this is about feminism and um, the queer body, trans body, the othered body, I've been thinking a lot also about just the body and this has been quite helpful. So enjoying that a lot. I guess I should talk about myself a bit why I'm deciding to talk into my phone. I'm an expat in Korea, working, reading, going to cafes, going to exhibits, living. Yeah, I like Korea. I'm from California. Gosh, what else do I say? Anyway, I just started, I just decided I'd start this because Rebecca Eats Books, who I started following and religiously watching beginning of last year basically when she started yeah i've just been thinking about books how i used to read at least a hundred books a year 
But that wasn't since my undergrad. I'm trying to change that this year. Um, I've, I've been good. I think I'm about to, uh, I started my Goodreads challenge saying I'd read 12 books this year. We are already at 13, so I bumped it up to 30. But uh, yeah, I just thought I'd start my reading journey by talking to my phone. And I hope whoever comes along on this little road enjoys me talking about books just as much as I love reading books. I don't know. I think that what the world is missing right now is community. And how are we forming communities for our own good and for the good of others? Yeah. Updates on the idiot. Yeah, not much is happening, but I think she's enjoying, our narrator's enjoying her classes, which is a good sign. Talked about sex, that was great. Not much is happening, except there's a kindness or like a sort of joy in life right now. Here's a passage that I um, thought was really cool. I thought that was the point of writing stories, to make up a chain of events that would somehow account for a certain mood, for how it came about and for what it led to. Yeah, and um, it's an interesting passage because I think this is the part where the, narr the writer herself is admitting that this is what it is, is sort of a mood piece heading towards the completion, the wholesomeness of this mood. I'm at 15%. I don't know if I want to lug through, my Kindle says, seven hours and nine more minutes left to this book. Uh, I can see why people, some people enjoy it, but uh, I don't know if I'm essentially enjoying it or just at this point going to try and read for completion. In a review by Barry Pierce, but he said that like he was gonna put it down after 100 pages and chose not to because something spellbinding happened apparently so i feel like i should keep going but um updates nothing much the new president of korea has been elected who is kind of trumpish that's no fun <gasps> y'all i got a bed frame which i think is yeah, my landlord was like, you can't sleep on a mattress on the floor anymore. And there's like a little section for my books too that I uh, had fun setting up. I watched After Yang. If anyone's seen Columbus, great film by the way. Big mood piece, very quiet, has these like indie handheld shots, but also these like gorgeous master shots of like silence. It's so meditative, but with After Yang, um, he explores like the sci-fi realm, which was beautifully done, really creative, um, tenacious. But then I reached this like weird point about like, okay, well, first of all, it's about this AI, this Chinese AI that is assigned um, to this little Chinese adoptee for this family to teach her about her like her heritage and culture and stuff the ai dies the whole point of the film is how does a family grieve how do they connect with one another after this loss and how does a family stay together it's about yang and him finding love and understanding what it means to be human and in touch with emotions and memory and everything until it gets this point where he questions about what it means to be Asian. And that's where like the whole film escapes me. God bless, I love Justin Min. Um, used to follow him on like Instagram like a long time ago where he was super funny, like before he did any like TV or anything. And he used to be a really great reader too. And um, he used to write for uh, this magazine that escapes me, but uh, I really loved that magazine too. It was kind of like kinfolkish, but Justin's great. Um, but it's about this Chinese adoptee and this Chinese AI. Justin's Korean and the director is Korean American himself. And then the girl who plays the Chinese adoptee, she's Indonesian. When you're trying to make a film about Asian identity, at least do the casting of it better and actually hire Chinese actors for the parts. Yeah. 
Anyway, that's where I lost respect for the film. But if uh, you like the director's work and if you liked Columbus, I think you'll really enjoy this. Vogue put out an article saying that it's one of the most important Asian American like identity films and it should not be marketed as such. Um, but yeah, I watched that. Um, I think I'm gonna go to Seoul this weekend. Um, I just have some errands to do. I've got like books to sell. You wanna see what the books that aren't able to sell? I guess I'll do that since I am trying to be a, a booktube channel, right? Talk about books. Um, so there's this used bookstore that's pretty, bookstore chain that's uh, pretty popular in Korea. It's called Aladdin. And uh, I'm gonna go to their Gangnam location to just like make a tiny profit, basically coffee money. Um, but the books that they won't take, because you can like check if they'll take it or not through the Aladdin app, there's like this barcode scanner, you can scan the like the barcodes on the back of the books. And um, yeah, it'll tell you like how much you can get for it and if it'll, uh, if they'll buy it or not. Um, but this, they will not take the Book of Tea, which is a really cute book about tea um yeah it's a really modest look at tea ceremony and the practices of it and the peace that comes with it and the whole discipline of aesthetics when it comes to not just tea but the tea room and how you should orient a room um when you serve guests tea and such and as well as like the history of tea a bit and um Flowers! Yeah, flowers. Yeah. And like Ikebana to a certain extent. But the way that it opens up is really interesting about how the West has always perceived the East as this like nasty thing. And this whole book like reclaims basically the amount of history that has come with what tea means. And it like totally shuts down the West's perception of like the Asian identity. And this book was like written 1906, y'all. 1906. Can't believe they won't pick this up, but I think I'm gonna send this to my friend back in America at some point. But The Art of Cruelty by Maggie Nelson. I've always loved Maggie Nelson. I've only, before this, I only read Bluettes, which uh, is phenomenal. It's about this, the narrator who falls in love with the color blue as if Blue was like another human being. Gorgeous, gorgeous prose. But this, uh, very, very dense, but um, approachable if you like art and art critique, talks about cruelty and um, the difference between cruelty and violence. And it really helps make sense of the world post Bush which I don't feel like I ever got some sort of closure with. Like I, there was this like, I wanna say like two years ago where I was just so upset about 9-11 and like oil and just American imperialism at the time. And I was like, ugh, I wish there was a book that would talk about this stuff. And this kind of basically tied the knots. And yeah, very interesting read. The other book, the last book that I wouldn't take, is Asylum Road by Olivia Sujic. Phenomenal. Loved this. Every bit of it. The end is wild. The whole build-up. It's very claustrophobic about borders, identity, language, um, family. Like, this, the tight claustrophobic spa spaces that consume us when we interact with these different borders. Um, so be it. But, um, yeah, phenomenal read. I highly recommend this. I wish I could give this to somebody. Otherwise, I'm just gonna give it to this, like, donation place. Um, Beautiful Life, I think it's called. Something like that. But they, it's like a Goodwill in Korea. Also a chain. And, yeah, whoever lives in my city, super lucky if they ever find this. 
you know what? That's, I think, what my mission is going to be. I'm going to just create a literary city again through the distribution of used goods. This is a work of charity, truly, like intellectual charity. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna go to Seoul, run, do some errands, and then meet up with a friend to catch an Ai Weiwei show at the MMCA. Maybe dinner, I think. Yeah, I'll figure it out. It's like, every time I come home, my hair is just like crazy. I feel like when I leave work, I should put on a hat. I should put on a hat so that like this is contained. All of this is contained, but it's just like, and yeah, yeah. Hi, it's Friday weekend. I just got back from renewing my visa for another year. Got some tea. Tart. And we got mail. We got mail. Um, love this brand. It's by this cute lady. I'm not gonna say I regret my purchase, but the moment of such thrilling pleasures when you purchase something. That was fucking weird. Like my camera just stopped recording all of a sudden. Am I running out of storage? I've been filming just off of this iPhone 12 mini, only 128 gigabytes. Why do I feel like 128 gigabytes was like a lot back then, like circa 2017. And now it's like meaningless. There's like, you can't do anything with 128 gigabytes. Just me. Not sure if I regret this purchase. You know, the problem with online things, you won't know until you, until it comes, right? Here we go. Ah, this is the little receipt. No, it's just a little cute card. It's shaped like a little airline ticket. Do you see that? Oh my God, absolutely adorable. This is the other box. <sighs> this must be the receipt. Nope, cleaning and care. All in this bag. Oh my God, wait. <laughs> it comes in a little tote. Ah! That is so great. It's a good sized tote too. It's like perfect for groceries or like day at the beach. It's perfect. Are you ready? Am I ready? Wow. You like that ASMR? Oh my God. take these off oh my god i forget it comes with a clutch oh so cute oh that is so nice feels very slick very slick <sighs> do we love that or do we love that look at that that is like the sexiest bag ever. Do you see this? Do you see this? Up close detail. Look at the sheen on that. Look at that. It's like up to my, this part of the arm. Let me show you the inside. Pretty spacious, pretty great. There's a pocket on the inside. Do you see that? Oh wait, oh my God, there's two pockets. There's this, oh, oh. Okay, okay, I see. It's one big pocket and then two little pockets for smaller things. But like, y'all, oh, I love this. I wish I could pull this off, but I don't think I can. It's just gonna sit and look pretty for me. Oh, I love this. I love it. 
reasons I purchased this bag was because it reminds me of like Celine, but like a little bit of Jacques Mousse. Like it has the same shape, style, very structural. It's just such a unique size too. I don't think I've seen bags really in this size. Fits very easily over the arm like that. Have your like Starbucks. Do you see this? I wish this was, I, part of me wishes this was part of the handle and then a part of me doesn't. But like, I feel like you can just throw this in here and uh, yeah, or just like not have the little buckle, which is fine. But like, do you, wow. Very beautifully made. Perfect. You can fit a book in here. Shall we put a book in here? Look at this. Mind you, okay, it's a small book. It's a small book. But like, while waiting for a friend, I believe, philosophy, always carry around a book. Because you're always going to be waiting on something, on someone, always carry a book. Or a Kindle. I should really get back to reading my Kindle. And so, it comes with this little clutch as well. Little zip pouch for all your necessities. We love a bag and bag. Goes inside very easily. Y'all, I love this. I love it. Can I like, do we like that? Does this work? Can I like wear this out? I feel like I'd be so comfortable wearing it back like in America, but for some reason, not here. Don't ask me why. Let's just, let me look myself wow i love that it is so nice it is so nice i'm great i'm great i love this bag so much well friday gonna keep it chill i want to do some writing a little bit of work because i have to wake up early tomorrow to get to seoul yeah I'll probably watch a movie i forgot the full name of the film but it's mishima something 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 uh saw like saw it on like a pinterest board some of the screenshots of it i was like whoa visually stunning so gonna watch that uh yeah hope everyone has a good friday this is the fit for today i literally wear the same thing every single day our beloved bag for the day. She heavy, very heavy. She'll last though, I think. Like again, this bag. Do you see this? Do you see this? Do you see this? Um, a little morning Glenn Gould and Leonard Bernstein, anybody? Also, did we want the fit breakdown? Um, this like oatmeal uh, wool coat, little uh, blue shirt with the mock neck, um, and these uh, brown, they're brown, I promise. Let me see if I can change. They're brown, brown pants. This is it. We can fit. so sweaty and i'm so sorry if you've seen this fit before i literally wear the same thing every single day it's not that i don't put thought into my fits it's just i've already pre put thought into them so that i don't have to think about it 
in the morning when I put it on. Yeah, walking over from the grocery store. We, do you want to see my haul? E-Mart. Mango yogurt. I don't know why I'm obsessed with this, but I am. Um, anyway, um, in terms of reading, we've gotten a little bit further into The Idiot. Can't say much has happened, but um, our little narrator is uh, liking this Ivan guy. We like him too. He's kind of like playing hard to get, sends these like funny emails. Um, I forgot to vlog about it, but uh, there will be a video of it here, a picture maybe. Um, read Tanglish to English, is that what it's called? But uh, my first Singaporean novel, or like work, literary work, I've never read anything from Singapore. Like thinking about it, I have friends in Singapore and I was like, you know what? I've never read Singaporean literature. What is that about? So I got this uh, book from a giveaway from Books Actually, which is this bookstore in Singapore that I've always wanted to go to. I was supposed to go somewhere in the past two years, but pandemic stuff. So we didn't get to do that. And so I thought, okay, I'll just support the bookstore by buying it online from them. And uh, yeah, won the book in an Instagram live giveaway. Really nice. And then I also, this is so embarrassing. I also, I, I can't even recall the name of the playwright, but there's the Singaporean playwright writes basically about social issues in Singapore. Uh, <laughs> I haven't even opened it yet. It's still like packaged in this paper wrapping from like a year ago. And uh, it's really pretty though. Love the gift wrapping paper, gorgeous. But I believe there are three plays in here or like collected plays that I just haven't opened yet. Because it's so pretty, I don't want to open it yet. I'll open it when I run out of books to read. Um, but yeah, it's so pretty. But um, yes, it was my first taste of Singaporean literature. Very nice. Um, it was basically pandemic poetry. Um, we were finally there. Pandemic literature, which was great. Touched on some points of loneliness, alonesomeness, trying to survive friends trying to survive being by yourself trying to survive yeah what it means to be online and be that the new normal great short collection of poems really enjoyed them which were like translated from du fan du fo chinese poetry i will have a blurb here to correct myself but yes very cool because it has like a like he made centuries old poems with a modern twist that speaks to our time now thinking we'd be out of the pandemic by 2022 um still speaks to us even now that's as far as uh my reading goes i think i'll read um since i read i finished glitch feminism Juliana Huxtable was mentioned in the in the text. If any of you don't know Juliana Huxtable, followed her on Tumblr in like the OG days. Great stuff. But I saw this book in New York 2017, I think, on VK. And I thought, oh my god, this is great. Mucus in the in my in my pineal gland. And I thought, why didn't like, I don't think I had money. There was a, uh, the, oh, it was The Met. The Met had the Ray Kawakubo show, um, Comme des Garçons, and um, I bought a coat there that I should not have spent money on, but I did. And I don't regret that purchase. It's still in my closet back home, in a dust jacket, of course, and it's, I still love it. Worn it to many cool places, but yes, I forgot the title of this book for so many years and then found it and paid a ridiculous price for it on eBay. 
and I'm going to enjoy it. Um, it's still in pretty nifty condition. Yeah, please don't. I think it was like 50 bucks I spent money on this. But it, it's like out of print and you can't get copies of it anymore. So that's my defense, but uh, it's gorgeous. Like plays with prose, um, deconstructing language and form. Very fun, very colorful, bold, very bold. And yeah, I'm excited to read it. A trap. Um, because I walked an hour, I decided to get myself a reward. We have takoyaki. I was thinking of doing like a takoyaki time. Takoyaki and chat time, but I don't know how I feel about filming myself eat. I'm on, this isn't a mukbang channel, y'all. This is uh, supposed to be booktube. Hope you have a lovely Tuesday whenever you watch this. I forget that like you can turn down the brightness. I mean, I feel like this is so moody. Do we like this? Or we can change the light on this thing. Nope. Ooh. Mm. Maybe. I don't know. But, uh.